What do Mila Kunis, Cameron Diaz, Eddie Murphy, and Michael J. Fox have in common? They're among the famous actors who have voiced animated characters from movies and TV shows like Shrek, Family Guy, and Stuart Little. So what does it really take to become a voiceover artist? Buddy Studios Angela Serrano is here to talk about it with us this morning, all the way from Bogota, Colombia. So in a nutshell, Angela, what is a voiceover artist, really? All right. Well, hi. Thank you very much for having me today. So, well, what is a voiceover artist? Well, basically, as the name says, is a person that is an artist of the voice. So basically, it's a person that has studied more, like most of the time acting or even singing. And it's a person that just gives lives to the voice that you're listening to. They just give all the personality, they create characters, they create moods, they create um, feelings, they create everything that you will see just using their voice. So what is your role at Bunny Studio? All right, so I am the head of quality control and pro management at Bunny Studio. So basically, I just make sure that every single recording that um, our clients receive has the best quality ever possible. And we also make sure that our pros, like the voiceover artists and other um, craft, like crafters and freelancers that we work with, just have um, the best experience with our platform, understand how we work, and just make sure that everyone receives the best, highest quality of voiceovers and creative products possible. Now, as everyone has experienced, and especially our Great Day Live viewers understand, I mean, we're all just trying to, you know, bend with the situation. I am currently in my kitchen. My house is kind of being dismantled as there's some remodeling efforts going on. But normally, I would keep my microphone hidden as we, you know, we try to conduct an interview in this, with as much normalcy as possible. But I thought it was appropriate to show that. But so what does it truly take, though, for someone if this isn't something that you've you've studied or I mean, how do you break into that business, Angela? Well, to break into the voiceover industry, the first thing that I believe that you have to do is really have compromise, discipline and passion for voiceovers. Um, it's not something that you just like can do out of spite with every other career and every other like craft that you decide to do, especially with artistic um, like crafts that you have. Um, you really have to love it. You really have to enjoy it and you really have to be prepared to like put yourself into it. Um, what I would recommend to get started into the voiceover industry first is to know your voice listen to yourself record yourself even if you only have your phone or you only have your computer listen to yourself record yourself start getting used to how you sound how people are perceiving you how you are um, using your voice to communicate that's one of the first things that I would say Angela who are some of your most favorite voiceover artists in the industry especially names that people would know Oh, so from my favorite voiceover artist, I really have to say Xmar is Mark Hamill. Um, he is Luke Skywalker, and he's also the voice of the Joker. Like, he has done one of the best, best, best performances, um, like, there. He's really, really amazing. I really like Aluli Carvalho. She is the one that, she's the one that voices Moana. She's really, really awesome, and she has a great voice. But I would have to say that Mark Hamill is my favorite. Well, he is definitely a legend. Well, okay. Yeah. So maybe not legends quite yet, but definitely some of our favorite members of the team. We had GDL reporter Joanne Dixon and executive producer Connor Hughes give their hands at voiceover work. So I'm going to let you give us a little bit of a critique after taking a listen to them. And just for our audience, just so you know, Connor and Joanne were just sent scripts and that's it. There was no direction whatsoever, but then they were just instructed to read as they saw fit. So check him out. The king chose me. He finally saw potential in me. After all these years, the training, the sacrifice, I'm finally going to have a place at the table. I will not let you down, my king. I did all of this waiting to prove my loyalty to the crown. I will serve faithfully. I will give my strength and my life to be of service. I cannot wait for my first mission. I am ready! It's time for an adventure. Pack your bags and get ready to go into the wild. With our new wild bag, you'll be prepared to face any challenge that might come your way. It has a pocket for everything you need, so kiss goodbye those days when you left the necessary tools at home. Wild bag has it all for you. Rope, tools, water, tent, you name it, we have the pocket for it. Wild bag, go get yours now. 
Okay, Angela, now you've heard both Joanne and Connor. Let's go ahead and start with Connor, whose character was an animated character. She was asked to voice that. So what's your critique as a definite voiceover professional? All right. So to Connor, I think that she did a great job. I mean, it was a very, very nice voiceover. Like you can really tell that she wanted to do like an animated character. It sounded like um, someone maybe in like the medieval era. So it was really, really nice. I really like um, the overall performance that she provided. Um, the only thing that I would say, um, I would have three main um, comments for her. So first of all, she is stressing her vocal cords too much. So I know that she was trying to like make a different voice that didn't sound like herself, but um, she really needs to put a little bit more of like um, like not stressing her vocal cords too much because that kind of performance is not going to last. So for example, let's think that she has to record this for 30 minutes or an hour, even two hours. It's not going to last. She's going to hurt her vocal cords too much. The only thing is that it was also a little bit too like um, acting and, uh, and she was leaving some um, unnatural pauses. I believe that it was because she wasn't very familiar with the script. So she was still like reading it and like getting familiar with it. So there were some parts that um, felt a little like she was acting too much. I know that that sounds um, like unnatural because she's acting, but we also want her not to act that much. Um, we usually right now for these kind of characters, we want them to sound natural. Like you're trying to bring a person um, to life, you know, they're animated characters, but they still um, want people to feel like they are, like they exist, you know, like even if they're um, unnatural or fantasy characters. The character was still also like a little bit nasal, like she was talking too much from her nose, um, which is not bad. It depends on the character, but I sometimes felt that she was overdoing it a little bit. But anyway, it was a great performance and I would totally um, coach her a little bit and maybe with like an hour or, or so recording together, the space would be like super, super nice. She has a great voice. Okay, and what about Joanne, whose voiceover script was a, a commercial of sorts? Yeah, so for Joanne, I also believe that she has that commercial tone right spot on. Like, she knows exactly what she's doing. I'm sure that she knows um, a, a thing or two about commercial, um, like, voices. She's probably very used to commercials. Um, however, I would have mainly four things for her. So mainly I would say that she was doing it a little bit too fast. Um, when you listen to recording and you listen to voiceovers, you have to enunciate every single word really well because when you do that, too fast they start getting muffled and they and you start missing vowels and you start missing words and you start missing like syllables so um i would recommend her to go a little bit more paced a little bit slower um the second one is that it's a little bit too salesy like right now we are used to those commercials from back then from the 90s from the early 2000s but right now the the like the voices the commercial voices that are the most sought for and that are the most looked for are natural conversational like you're talking to a friend you're telling them hey look at this I have this new product. Um, why don't you come and, and try it out? It's really cool. So um, the new commercial is a nice mixture between natural voiceovers and this commercial salesy voiceovers that is trying to sell you something. But people psychologically react better when they feel engaged and when they feel that the person is talking to them like as a friend or in a more natural conversational tone. But the rest, I think it was really nice. It was She was using like her normal natural tone of, of voice. So that, that, that was really nice. And I really like it. I think that with a little bit more of practice and letting her personality like flow in and just um like up here i think that it would be like a great voice she could be like a great voiceover artist absolutely well we really appreciate you taking the time all the way from colombia like we had said angela one just last quick question here mm -hmm. what is one piece of advice that you would give to someone who is watching today who says i want to know more and see maybe i could become a voiced artist as well one piece of one piece of advice so one piece of advice is really practice like voiceover art like voiceovers it's a matter of discipline and practice um i i am the kind of person that believes that every single person in the world can be a voiceover artist it's just a matter of practicing and taking feedback to heart if do you have what it takes to share your voice talent check out bunnystudio.com thanks so much angela